for the right of reply, the Honourable Attorney General. You have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sir, Mr. Speaker, there's a number of issues I'd like to raise, but before, in response to what the opposition said. Uh, sir, the FCCC obviously plays a very pivotal role in the economy uh, because it does provide that independent assessment in respect of not just only consumer protection, but ensuring this competition continues within the economy. And as we know, that any economy must have robust competition to be able to deliver not only for businesses but more so for the consumers so they get better pricing. And Mr. Speaker, sir, in the, in the budget that has been allocated to FCCC, sir, if you see in 2016-2017 the annual budget allocated was $2.4 million. Today it gets $4.5 million. One of the reasons, of course, sir, is that, for example, in the 2021 financial year we granted a specific sum of $300,000 to conduct investigations and monitor the tax and duty reductions on 1,942 items. So whenever, for example, we reduce a duty on a particular item, it has to be ensured that those reductions in duties are actually passed on to members of the public. And similarly, uh, similarly sir, uh, the additional funding was to create awareness, inspections and tours to monitor business traders in rural and maritime regions. Honorable Kurudani should know this. And in fact, they have an MOU with the Ministry of Itauke Affairs uh, into, in particular for areas in the maritime and the deep rural areas where remote villages, there may be a village, uh, you know, a cooperative store where they have a regulated item and they may not actually be charging the regulated price. So they have to be monitored and actually create this awareness. So uh, just in respect, Honorable Prime Minister has mentioned overall the government objective, but in respect of uh, uh, what Honorable Biman Prasad and the others have said, sir, uh, they, they seem to misunderstand FCCC's role is not to control the cost of things in Fiji in the way that they are meaning. Honorable Kurin Rani said, oh, FCCC is not doing its job because the price of things have been going up. Well, it has been going up. And FCCC's job is to make sure that it does not get out of, pri uh, out of uh, uh, price out of hand. So, for example, he should know that there are certain items in Fiji, sir, that are price controlled, and there are certain items in Fiji that are not price controlled. If you want to go and buy a plastic toy, it's not price controlled. But if you want to buy a rice, it is price controlled. If you want to buy cooking oil, it's price controlled. If you want to buy fuel, it's price controlled. If you want to buy cigarettes, it's a different pricing mechanism altogether. It's not price controlled. So he needs to understand that. FCCC's job is not to reduce the price of things. So I, I shudder when I, when I listen to those kind of comments from the opposition, sir, because God forbid if they ever come to government, they think they will, but they won't. God forbid that, sir, Mr. Speaker, sir, because they will go off to FCCC and say, don't increase the price of flour. Businesses actually will collapse. If today Punjo and Sons and FMF are bringing wheat at $300 a ton, grounding it in Fiji, making flour, it is price control at the wholesale level. In other words, before they sell it to the supermarkets, it has to be price control. So they will go and say, look, I paid $300 a ton from Australia, from the Australian Wheat Board. This is my freight cost, this is my labor cost, my electricity cost, etc. And then they say, you can make only this much margin. Then they will sell it to the supermarket and then shop and save will come and wherever the retail supermarkets are, They'll go to FCCC and say, look, I bought it for this much from Punja and Sons, and this is my labor cost, my rent cost, etc., electricity cost. They'll say you can make only this much. That's how price control works. If tomorrow, as he is suggesting, if Australia puts up the price of wheat from $300 to $400 a ton, obviously the price of flour will go up. But if they were to be in government, they will tell Punja and Sons, you sell it at $300 a ton, a $300 a ton price. The entire business will shut down. They won't be able to run the business because you don't know how to run a business. He doesn't know how to run a business. None of them know how to run a business. Honorable Prasad does not even know how to run a business. He stands up here and talks about the F Triple C. He talks. Uh, he stands up here and talks about the F Triple C. Honorable Prasad saying, "Oh, it's affecting the economy." This is the man who has continuously undermined the Fijian economy. He says, oh, the banking sector is not doing well. FSC is bankrupt. Uh, Fiji is bankrupt. This independent is not, uh, this is not independent. We don't have Mr. enough Speaker. reserves. I, I think, uh, Mr. Speaker, the Attorney General borders on irrelevance and uh, making wild allegations. When we come into this parliament and raise the issue of an independence, 
When we raise the issue of independence of an organization, it's not undermining the economy. In fact, the whole report, the, the, the private sector diagnostic report, actually talks about how inefficient, how the lack of independence in organizations actually affect the overall economy. So that's not undermining the economy, Mr. Speaker. He should, he should stick to his... Yeah. Irrelevant. Irrelevant. Mr. Speaker, sir, Honourable Prasad is continuously on the floor of this parliament undermine the Fijian economy. Yeah. Every single chance they get. When the, World Bank, when the World Bank puts out a report, it doesn't like it. Oh, World Bank is not independent. When the RBF puts out a report, oh, RBF is not independent. This is the kind of shenanigans that people actually look at, and that's what undermines the economy, not FCCC, which is actually trying to do its job. The fact of the matter is Honorable Prasad should stand up in Parliament. He was actually investigated by FCCC. He was investigated by FCCC for rental purposes in 2018. Order. 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 Mr. Speaker, sir, Mr. Speaker, sir, when we come to Parliament, we need to come to Parliament with clean hands. He was investigated by FCCC. I just had a text message from Joel uh, Abraham, the CEO of FCCC. He said about a year or so ago, he met me in the supermarket, put his hand on my shoulder and said, you're doing a good job. And today, according to him, he's not doing a good job. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, sir, the point of the matter is this. The point is, sir... Mr. Speaker, point of what I get. Mr. Spock, the Minister of Economy is actually lying. I have never said that Joel Abraham has not done... In fact, I said I don't envy his job. I said that this man sitting there, the Minister of Economy, he, he makes them political. He gets his permanent secretary, he gets his permanent secretary to respond to politicians. I actually, I actually said, I actually said, and, and I've said this, that you're doing a good job, but you are under the influence of politicians in the Fiji First Party. I've said this, Mr. Speaker. Sir. Sir, uh, Honourable President, I think Ms. Head heard me. I said that Joel Abraham sent me a text to say that you patted him on the shoulder saying yeah, you I are did. doing a good job. I did. Yes. I That's did. what I said. What is your problem? Yeah. What is your problem? I said the same yeah. thing. Because Mr. You Speaker, sir, this that, is, you, know? you see, this yeah. is the kind of contradiction and hypocrisy of the members from the other side. Mr. Job. Speaker, sir, I'm not implying anything. Stop reading into things. Yeah. I wish... I wish Honorable Prasad was as vociferous as he is today, if he was vociferous like that in New Zealand. Don't do run away, you know. Do run away. I wish he was vociferous in New Zealand, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir. The other, the other point I wanted to make, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir. The, the, Mr. Speaker, sir. The independence of FCCC is actually seen in the fact that despite it being an election year, FCCC has actually gone ahead with price increases. It goes to show the independence of the organization. They don't seem to understand that. In fact, they don't even make submissions, as highlighted by somebody earlier on. They don't go, Honorable Koya had said that, they don't go and make submissions. Labor Party did it, why don't you join them and make submissions? Various other parties have appeared before FCCC and made submissions. Why don't they do that? Government, in fact, Mr. Speaker, sir, objected, objected to the sugar price increase. Yet they went ahead and gave the sugar price increase. Yes, admittedly, not as high as what uh, uh, FSC wanted, but they actually still gave them a price rise. We could have done a political shoddy job here if we had political influence over FCCC and said, don't increase the price. It's election year. Election may be in July. July the 30th is the first date we can have elections. Don't increase the price. The public will feel good about it. But we didn't do that. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, sir, the fact of the matter is this. We have foreign investors in Fiji. The Japanese have invested 44% in EFL. They would never come and invest in Fiji if they did not feel the independent institutions that look at price regulation of a price control item like electricity, if it weren't independent, they would yeah. never invest. In fact, if they were honest with themselves, they would look at the act itself and find out what are the mechanisms that gives it independence from every single institution, including government, including ministers, including permanent secretaries. They don't come to parliament with clean hands, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, the other point I also wanted to make was Honorable Ngawoka, you know, he just goes on and on and on. They, we must do something. We must do something. Yes. 
Mr. Speaker, sir, he has not been able to even produce a single alternative budget since 2014. Not a single alternative budget. Nor has NFP. Nobody has been able to produce a single alternative budget. They think, they think, they think that the solution is in just having a committee. Sitting allowance, go off, talk to people and we'll find a solution. Mr. Speaker, sir, he says we don't know the price of fuel. Let me read out the price of fuel Order. according to the globalpetrolprices.com, which does it on a weekly basis, sir. The last uh, uh, posting they did, which is a credible source, that's the only source you should go to, on the 2nd of May, in Fiji, in Fiji, the price of unleaded fuel at Fijian dollars. See, they come in and say, oh, in US it's $4, but they don't do the conversion, you see. Four US dollars, obviously, is eight Fijian dollars. They do the, no need to do the conversion. Compare apples with apples. Mr. Speaker, sir, unleaded fuel. Australia was $2.73 a litre on the 2nd of May. Fiji, $3.02 a litre. New Zealand, $3.45 a litre on the 2nd of May. We were a lot cheaper than New Zealand. We were slightly expensive than Australia. Mr. Speaker, sir, Mr. Speaker, sir, diesel, diesel, sir, diesel on the 2nd of May, Fiji was $2.85 a litre. Australia, $3.01 a litre. New Zealand, $3.41 a litre. You see, his logic fails because he's saying they have a bigger economy, they have the purchasing power. So despite being a country that has four and a half million people in New Zealand, their petrol prices and their diesel prices are still more than ours. He says we should build more storage capacity. You will never be able to match the amount and volume of fuel that New Zealand and Australia buys. And nobody would be willing to put up that kind of money up front. They don't even understand hedging. Hedging in price fuel is being done. They don't understand about hedging at all. Mr. Speaker, sir, you only know the word. You don't know how it works. Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir. Again, Mr. Speaker, sir, the other point they made about, you know, uh, Honourable um, Tuisawau. He went on about, you know, cost of living, wages, members of independent assessment. Dr. Pata, who has done three wage independent reviews of the minimum wage in Fiji, Mr. Speaker, sir. He's an independent professor from Australia. When they look at minimum wage increase, they go around the countryside. They talk to trade unions if they want to turn up, and probably like NFP, they don't want to turn up. Meet employers, employees, individuals can go and make submissions. And based on that, Mr. Speaker, sir, then he recommended a minimum wage increase. None of them, none of them have mentioned that. None of them mentioned that in Fiji there was never minimum wage until Beni Marama government introduced a minimum wage. None of them mentioned that. None of them mentioned, Mr. Speaker, sir, that since then there's been three reviews. None of them mentioned the fact that now we have a minimum wage of $4 to be incrementally given and reach $4 by January of next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. None of them mentioned that, Mr. Speaker, sir. None of them mentioned the fact with the increment, minimum wage increment $4, it means the wages in the other wage sectors will also increase by the same percentage, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, the fuel, 20% has been removed. He says there's no assessment being done of the 21 vet items. Never in the history of Fiji have we had 21 yeah. items zero rated at best. Yeah. And not only those six items, things like sanitary pads for women, things like toothpaste, soap, washing detergent. These are everyday household items that people buy. Before there's only six items, the rice, etc. Mr. Speaker, sir, see, this is the problem. There's no independent analysis, analysis being done. And this is why we continuously on this side of parliament say there's a lot of misinformation. These young students are here, first year, political science students. Imagine to the nonsense that they are listening from the other side. And we have urged people to be critically assessment, Mr. Speaker, sir, to be critically assessing information. A lot of this information, all of this information is available independently on various credible pages, on credible sites, Mr. Speaker, sir. This is the rationale for that is also given. So, Mr. Speaker, sir, I would urge all members to be able to please, when they debate this, we're going to debate another report. Please understand the report you're debating. FCCC is not ACCF. FCCC does not reduce the price of things. 
FCCC is independent, Mr. Speaker, sir. And we need to be able to ensure that that independence continues because it will provide not only consumer protection, but what is critically important is to be able to provide competition. If we have competition in the market, we increase consumption, we create jobs for young people like them who will go into the workforce very soon, and we will be able to have a stable economy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. I thank the 